This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tum. We're really pleased to have this month's featured article in the Heart Rhythm Journal come from Naples, Italy. I'm welcoming the corresponding author, Antonio D'Onofrio. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you for uh, the kind invitation. Well, we're excited to talk about predicting all cause mortality by the means of a multi-sensor ICD algorithm for heart failure monitoring, especially relevant given that Heart Rhythm just issued guidance and consensus on remote monitoring. This is beautiful to be able to show heart outcomes rather than just reducing hospitalizations. Tell us a little bit about why your group got interested in this, this question and, and heart logic. Since uh, their development, diagnostic tools of cardiac and blood electro electrical device have been used to react promptly in the case of a technical issue on the onset of arrhythmias in the management of thromboembolic events and the volume overload in acutely decompensated heart failure and so on. However, I have uh, always thought that the availability of information collected continuously and automatically by devices could be of great help in diagnosis and could provide important prog prognostic information in a complex, complex clinical syndrome such uh, as failure. This is uh, even more relevant in this period in which clinical research has made available new and powerful disease-modifying treatments that may require prognost prognostic indicat indicators to guide their administration and the optimization. In recent years, I have already published positive results regarding the prognostic power of a single sensor ICD in, in uh, diagnostics in our treatment journal. I published in February a paper showing uh, the importance of uh, night mean heart rate in comparison with the uh, uh, daily heart, uh, mean heart uh, rate. And we showed that uh, an increase of five beats uh, in, the, in the mean heart rate can increase the mortality of 36% and increase uh, the uh, incidence of uh, life-threatening uh, arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia and uh, um, ventricular fibrillation of 22%. So we demonstrate a, a superiority of uh, mean uh, heart rate during the night in comparison with uh, with uh, uh, and, uh, with uh, uh, diurnal um, heart mean heart rate and also the, the 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 increase in mortality. So it's very important also to look at a single sensor. But we know that uh, heart logic combine multiple physiological sensors that. Uh, evaluate different aspects of heart failure physiology, and it's superior to monitoring a single, a single sensor. Coming back uh, to your question, I should say that um, I have been interested in, uh, in mortality long ago. In fact, I tried to publish many years ago a paper, but it was but, uh, uh, on it, but the reviewers were uh, much more interested in the reduction of hospitalization, but not in the mortality. So our rationale have been to predict uh, mortality, which uh, the, with the, the consequence effect of helping to reduce the rate of death. What uh, does it mean? That uh, is understanding the progressive deterioration of the patient condition, the physician should not wait for the 20% of alert time, because we have demonstrated that patients with more than 20% of the time in the alert have a, 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 an increased uh, mortality. So you take the multi-sensor, so you've moved from single sensor now to multiple physiologic parameters, and you look at almost 600 ICD patients from 26 centers. And what was really striking with the follow-up of over two years is that 
about 65% of these patients are actually in alert states at different times. Maybe take us through figure two and tell, show us your findings of what it means when you're in an alert state. Okay. We did a, a prospective and randomized uh, multicenter study that collected the 568 patients in 26 uh, uh, study uh, centers. Looking at uh, figure, figure two that uh, uh, you uh, uh, decide, uh, want a comment, we can, uh, um, we can have uh, compared patients out of the alert in, uh, with the patients in the alert, but with the more than 20% of uh, observational time in the, in the alert. And, uh, and uh, what is interesting that uh, the curve diverge at, after one month, the patient that has more than 20% of uh, uh, artologic uh, in, in alert, have a, a, a 11, um, 11 um, had an hazard ratio of 11 more than patients out of the alert. So this is a, a very important message because we don't have to wait this uh, this point, this break point, this uh, new uh, 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 new, to new point. But uh, maybe we have to react before to avo avoiding this uh, uh, this uh, this point that is very very uh, in, in which the mortality increase in uh, in such way. Well, I think this is beautiful because also with the multivariate analysis, you show that with regardless of etiology of cardiomyopathy, CKD, atrial fibrillation, that this is an independent predictor for this yes, mortality. Yeah. So the future is here, that we can sit here, not see the patients, get multiple sensors of physiologic parameters, and be able to predict who is at risk for dying. And I think that this study, the reason we chose it, is such a beautiful analysis to be able to show that remote monitoring impacts not only hospitalization, as you're saying, but mortality, which is what you've always been interested. So congratulations, Dr. D'Onofrio, to you and all of your co-authors on a beautiful paper. And we're very happy that you joined Heart Rhythm TV and that we could highlight it as the paper of the month. Thank you for the uh, invitation. And uh, maybe we can see in another occasion, maybe with uh, another uh, methods, because I did... Uh, I looked at the mortality with another uh, algorithm. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I, th I think for this to be generalizable, like all science, it has to be applicable across different brands, different industries, different models, different makes, um, because I think the theme is what digital health, personalized health, and remote monitoring is, has, is exactly what and, it needs to push us. And the parameters uh, are different. Wonderful. Well, we're yeah, the other algorithm has some other different parameters that can be that are involved in the, in the prediction. Anyway, see you. Thank you. And thank uh, you so much for joining us on Harvard TV, Dr. Nafrio. Ciao. Ciao.